people to the streets of Westminster as Ian Cresci joins us now. Alan, you're a former Home Secretary. Are the security services too heavy-handed? Are they turning vulnerable young men into jihadists? No, of course they're not. Uh, the, the policy contest which has, which has various strands has one strand prevent which is dedicated to ensuring that people don't feel isolated. I mean the, the, this guy had a very expensive university education in this country. I don't think that's trying to... You mean Mwazi? Yeah. Mwazi. I don't think that's, uh, uh, that's suggesting that he doesn't belong here. A and I find it strange actually that when all of our efforts should be focused on <coughs> this distortion of Islam by jihadism that you know we're listening to uh, a message that says that somehow we're all guilty of this security services in particular you know what they should have done incidentally and this is Theresa May's great failing is three of those guys the London boys was the gang three guys with Enwazi uh, should have been on control orders they were on control orders and were sent outside of London it was when control orders were replaced by TPIMS that they were allowed to come back into London and they colluded in this guy going to Syria. If anything, security forces should have greater powers to deal with these threats, not from the Muslim community, from these, you know, this small minority. Who Michael? <clears throat> well, I think the interviewing of Mwazi by um, security officers a few years ago was entirely appropriate. He had behaved in a way that uh, drew attention to himself and made people fear that he was becoming an extremist. The attempt to turn him into an agent was entirely appropriate. Uh, it obviously was not successful in his case. It is successful uh, in other cases. And uh, each of us in this room may owe our lives, may owe the fact that we're now alive at the moment to the fact that MI5 have penetrated these organizations and have thwarted a number of bomb plots. Because otherwise, you or you or you or I might have been in a shopping center or in an airport where we might have been machine gunned or might have been blown up. And thank goodness that the security services are turning some of these young men and are doing a good job at penetrating these organizations. Basim, what do you say? Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, I think we're all agreed on the fact that we don't want any of our youth committing acts of violence on the streets of London or indeed anywhere else. Um, so I think that's probably the starting point in relation to this. But I think the question we want to ask is, when we've got a number of youth coming to us all the time saying to us that you know we're feeling we're feeling aggrieved we're feeling like we're being harassed we're being abused uh, we're feeling that like there's a lot of un 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 unnecessary targeting of our communities we're not saying that the MI5 are making these people into jihadists what we're saying is that are we creating an environment here in the UK which is making fe people feel like they don't belong so if that is a factor for them leaving then then that's a question we need to ask and it's a question we need to interrogate. We're not saying for a second that they're turning them into these people. What we're saying though is that we want a more socially cohesive society and part of that is us taking a more empathetic approach to the kind of grievances that these young people have and not taking a heavy-handed securitized approach okay. um, towards them which is well, what we're seeing. You say that and that all sounds very reasonable but you encourage them to think what you say they think. I mean, Cage has had a long-running campaign against the security services, deciding to discredit the security services. On your website, you've claimed that UK individuals in Britain are tortured, rendered, and killed on the whim of British security agents. Uh, give me one person who's been killed on the whim of a British security agent. Um, I don't know about that language in particular. It's, all, it's what Cage has said. But you've claimed would, that people in Britain are mm -hmm. jailed without due process. Who's in jail today in Britain without due process? Well, we would say that a number of people were. We had a number of men who were held in detention without charge for you know, over a decade in the UK. Who's so in jail today without due process? Uh, currently, we would say no one, because a lot of the people that were came off their deportation orders, were, play, were actually deported or were extradited. So th those kinds of cases no longer exist. And nobody's been However, killed on the whim of a security agent. Well, you know, agent. we feel that there are certain questions to be asked in terms of individuals oh. who were killed by drone strikes in Somalia. So that's quite important that we No, but you say UK, no, but yeah. on your website you say UK individuals are tortured, rendered, killed absolutely on the whim of British security yes, agents. Well, absolutely. give me a name. Well, we know Marzen Beg, uh, Binyam Mohammed al-Habashi, uh, but the, we're making a wider point here about the way in which our security services operate. Right. Let, let me just um, explain myself a little bit better here, which is that what we're asking for, okay, is that there should be at least a degree of accountability 
where our security agencies have been involved in wrongdoing. We're not asking for anything unreasonable. We're not saying that they're evil people. What we're saying, though, is that when you have a cycle of violence, when you have a cycle of abuse where one side and there's a barbarization of warfare taking place, when we as British people, we move away from our values, values of due process, of the rule against torture, of the right to a fair trial, then what we do is that we actually start entering into that cycle of violence, that cycle of barbarization. What we want to say is a clear, send a very clear message that we never will accept this type of behavior. Look at the orange jumpsuits that ISIS are using right now. Those orange jumpsuits come out of only one place, which is Guantanamo Bay. We're saying if we stop things like Guantanamo Bay, if we stop these abuses, if we establish a moral authority about the way that we behave in the Western world, then that sends the strongest message possible that these type of things are completely unacceptable. You, and we reclaim on, that moral right, authority. But you're part of this uh, cycle of violence. You've supported mm -hmm. jihad. Uh, you supported suicide bombers. Your organization has close association with all manner of extremist groups. Is it uh, Tahir, for example? Mm -hmm. Your organization very close to a senior Al Qaeda terrorist in charge, uh, uh, Anwar al Awaki. You've been part of all that. All, all of the people that we represent, even those people we completely disagree with, and I disagree with many of Anwar Awaki's opinions, especially after his period of detention. You called him an inspiration. And, and at one time he was. In just he was a terrorist. <laughs> later on in life, later on in life. You see, this is the point. You call that for jihad. Absolutely, I do. Well, I mean, what do we mean by jihad? We mean self-defense. We mean the right to self-defense. And, and when I talk about self-defense, I talk also about when I look, when I read the accounts and I see what happened on September 11th, I completely understand why it is that America would want to defend itself and attack. But what we say is that everything has to be proportional, and even jihad has to be proportional. Look, we want our youth to grow up in the UK knowing what their rights and obligations are. Jihad is part of the religion of Islam. If we don't teach it correctly, then what's going to happen well, is we're you, going to You happen. weren't teaching yeah. it correctly outside the American Embassy in 2006. Every, you, were, you were a firebrand pe preacher that sorry, day. No, you that were encouraging there, there support for jihad. Yeah, there's a lot of emotion. There's a lot of emotion. For goes, violence. In, in demonstration, there's a lot of emotion that comes out. Okay? Well, that doesn't and excuse everyone, it. And everyone, and everyone who was at that demonstration would know entirely, would know instantly that Arsene Qureshi and Kate are people who do not advocate terrorism in Excuse any way. Excuse me, the, or, the, the, we, the, the, we, the... We advocate... The, the, organize, the, the mm -hmm. protest was organized by his uh, Tahrir, which is one of the non, most extremist groups non, in the country. Which is a non-violent organization. We're not members, non -violent? Of, we're not members of Hizb al-Tahrir, oh, but yeah. we support their right to make their political opinions. And this is the point that, look, if okay. you're going to shut down organizations like Hizb al-Tahrir, if you're going to call for that, then basically what Do you're you... Do you deny it's an extremist organization? Yeah, I would say it's, it's not an extreme. Right, well, I want one more question, then I'm going to bring in Alan mm -hmm. and Michael again. Your spiritual mentor and guide is Hatim al-Haddad, uh, and you've been close to him in the past, correct? He's one uh, scholar in the UK that but I you, think has an important you, you've, contribution. You've taken make. mentoring and guidance from it. He believes the following, that uh, female genital mutilation is not only acceptable, it's probably obligatory, that you should not question a man's right to hit his wife, that non-Muslim prisoners can be taken as slaves, that Jews are descendants of pigs, that death by stoning is okay for adultery, and that homosexuality is a crime against humanity. Have you been guided to believe that too? <laughs> I mean, I've never been guided to believe any of those things. Do you believe any of that? I, you know, I'm not a theologian. I can't no, I'm not that. asking you a theologian. I, I'm asking if you believe yeah. any of that. I, you know, I have, I have you know, absolutely no idea what you're talking about in relation to that. Well, you've that, said that, well, uh, that, well, that, that me, well, you've said that under me, the proper me, uh, Sharia law process, yeah that you would support the death penalty, let, let me, correct? Let me, exp let me, you know, actually, it's interesting you, you talk about that because one of the things that actually came well, out of that, that interview that I did with Julian Assange was a lot of criticism by, well, by scholars who said to me, why are you talking about issues you know nothing about? I'm not a theologian. Well, you, you said know, you supported my, my, the death my, penalty. My, 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 I'm not a theologian at all. But what, you don't have to be a theologian yeah. to have a view on the death penalty, and it implied that under a proper I, Sharia law process, you would support death by stoning, would you? I do a lot of work, actually, would against you? the death penalty. Would you? What I'm about and you what said my to Julian Assange is you supported it. Is, is due process of the law, okay? And that is what... So, the, the point that I was trying to make with that answer was to talk about due process. That's a very, very important thing as far as we're concerned. <coughs> when you don't but have... But after we've had due process, under a Sharia law system, 
Would you I support say, stoning? The, as far as I'm concerned, the, the Sharia law isn't practiced anywhere in the world. You have to give me an example okay. of where Sharia law is being practiced correctly. That's a, in, that's a weasel answer, isn't it's it? It's not a weasel, weasel answer. It's a simple question. No, if you had due question. process under see, Sharia law, no. would you support stoning for adultery? Well, we, it's well, a simple question. Well, you see, Andrew, what we're talking about here, okay, is, is how counter-terrorism policy is affecting our youth here in the UK. Well, what you've done, okay, is that you're trying to conflate, you know, kind of issues within Islam as a kind of theological issues within Islam with with what we're talking about. Well, but the thing what is, I'm trying is those two what are I'm very, trying very to different. find out what is need, whether well, you yeah. are putting up a yeah. moderate front and behind it uh, hangs a jihadist agenda. <laughs> That's what I've been asking and, and, you. But you won't okay. answer my questions. No, what we're saying, okay, is that you cannot simply conflate issues Does of theology and religion with violence on the streets of London, oh. which is exactly what I you are trying to I do. I think most people no, regard exactly stoning for doing. adultery is not an issue of theology, but a matter of uh, <laughs> civilization. What do you make of what you've heard? Alan first. Oh, well, this is what we're up against in terms of the, the moderate front. I mean, you know, I'd like to ask one question. I mean, do you believe Mbazi Mb was in... Tanzania on safari in 2009. You, must, what, be, you must be the only person in the that's world. That's why he told me, and nobody has provided me any evidence to the contrary. On, on no, safari, look, he was there why, on safari. So the security would, forces go, shouldn't okay, have shouldn't Alan, have questioned him Alan, because he was generally going why, on safari. Why would he bother getting engaged, setting up a job for himself in Kuwait, and doing all of that? If he was simply going to get himself killed, and the security forces in Al shouldn't have questioned him. No, I, ne let, I never let, said the security forces. Okay, let security me get a final question. point. I said uh, that they well, shouldn't have stopped him. They shouldn't have broken off his engagement. All they right. shouldn't have stopped him from getting I'm, a job up there. I wonder what yeah, might have happened to he just Gosh, if he went Final point from that's Michael. Impressive. I think it's worth <clears throat> remembering what Mwazi has done. I mean, he's, absolutely, uh, he's beheaded. He's beheaded people. I mean, as it happens, these people were the most innocent people you can imagine. They were journalists, they were aid workers. I agree they, with that entirely. It was absolutely diabolical. Mm -hmm. I think Asim, for, despite all his cleverness, comes over as an apologist for Mwazi. That's not true And I haven't I been able to, and I haven't been able to turn on the BBC all week without hearing you and seeing you. And I just wonder what the hell the BBC is doing giving you all this airtime. That time. is nonsense. I really you don't know, know what the BBC is doing giving you all this airtime. And, and I'll tell you, and I'll tell you why I think it's so unfortunate. Because mm -hmm. I think so many people are going to think that you are an apologist for Mwazi. But I'm telling you now and I'm I think not. that I think that is desperate for so community relations. Are you suggesting that I'm lying? Final I'm words. Yeah, I'm telling you now, okay, that I feel very, very bitter about what has become to this young man. If, it, if Jihadi John is Mwazi, then how can any human being condone that behavior it's terrible right. it should never happen and i'm unequivocally saying right now that we have to stop those types of executions because that it's that exactly that type of action that we are condemning in guantanamo bay and elsewhere and we don't want our muslim people to be doing other that. That right. no way have to, to stop behave. there we had to you got the last word thank you for being with us now it's late